sound here. Power the farm. That's right. Yeah. This is the best way to find the water of any way I know. Well, I guess it's all right, Charlie, if you believe in it. Believe in it. 114, 113, 112. A pull to the right. Is it one? Is it two? Is it three? Is it four? Is it five? A pull to the left. <laughs> There's a lot more to existence and life and the world than what meets the eye, than what is taken in through, through our immediate senses. My brother lived in an arid spot in Idaho, and there was quite a bit of dowsing going on there. And uh, he'd put in seven miles of pipe, uh, plastic pipe, to water tanks to water his cattle every section, every mile. And uh, he needed to tie on to that pipe to go at right angles to it. And he was—he thought he knew where he, the pipe was, but he was digging a trench, and he couldn't seem to intercept it. An old fellow came along. What you doing, Dave? Oh, I'm trying to find that pipe I put in here. You're having quite a bit of trouble, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, well, it's right here somewhere by the road. Well, here, maybe I can help you. And he, he went over and got a piece of sagebrush. And it was a forked stick. And he held it up, and he walked across here. I believe it's over here, Dave. <laughs> and he put a stick in the ground. Ah, go on, I know it isn't over there. He says, right here by the road. And he says, you know, I dug that trench, and when that stick fell in my trench, I hit the pipe. He says, <laughs> and uh, he says, now, how do you explain that? I've always tried to steer a course between skepticism and credulity. And to help me do this, I've constructed this scoreboard or league table on which I've rated various paranormal phenomena. It begins at plus five, certainly true, and then descends to zero, meaning that I just don't know. Dowsing is so useful that it ought to work, and in some cases it certainly does. For centuries, people called dowsers, or water witches, have been dazzling folks with what they say is the ability to divine where certain things are, primarily underground water supplies. Here in Vermont, where people rely on well water, housing is a serious and respected business. Something seems to move these rods. Is it psychic energy or self-deception? What is dowsing, anyway? I don't think anybody's really figured it out. You're a boy. This is the only way to have a boy. It's tame and quiet. When I first started here, I had to have water, so when there wasn't anybody around, I <laughs> walked up in the woods there and tried it, you know, and I kept getting this one area. And I said, let's try digging right down, right down here. And we went down nine feet and got about 30 gallons a minute right there. And that's the one we've been using to this day. And we had as many as 30 cattle and 100 hogs and all our household stuff on that same little dug well. And never had any problem here any, ever. <laughs> Well, the name is Carl Bracey. This is Bernie, California. I've been here a little over 30 years. I've been dowsing about 30 years. Well, I am Mike Doney from Milwaukee, Oregon. And I've been a dowser now for the past 45 years. 
Well, my name is Ed Stillman, and I've been a uh, dowser for 12 years. My name is Vernell Boyd. I am Nicholas Fink. My name is Lee Kachadurian. My name is Cassie Epstein. My name is Dr. Grace L. Carrington. And I'm 87 years old. I was born in 1909. I, I lived on a farm. I was brought up on a farm. There was five of her children in the family, mother and father, and went to a little country school, a district school, one-room school. A, a lot of folks will ask me to go and find water for them, then they'll get somebody else that does this also. It, it's hard work to believe, even myself, what I can do with that stick. Wait a minute, don't run, please. Come back. Come back. Do you know where we're going? Danville, Vermont. In this small American town, everyone learns the mysteries of divining from an early age. Well, I had heard about dowsers before uh, my wife got involved, before Lee got involved. And everybody sit down. Okay. Now, all you're doing with dowsing rods is making yourself into a radio. The first time it hit home was that your mother insisted on putting the well on the other side of the road. I wanted to put the well on this side of the road for practical reasons, a driveway I should say, uh, because if you put a water line across a driveway, it's going to freeze in the winter time unless you put it way down. She and her mother doused that the well should be on the other side of the driveway and that we want to get all this water out of this location. So of course we compromised and we put it on the other side of the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never doused before. As a matter of fact, I had no intention of dowsing then. I was handed L rods by my mother. And she said, here, you do it. And I was thinking, first of all, I don't, I don't think it works. Anyway, it's really just folklore. And if it were to work, it wouldn't work for me anyway. Well, I came home from work, and the well driller was still drilling. Your mother was tripping over her chin. Oh, he's down. He's down to where he should be getting all kinds of water, and there's no water yet. I doused it. It was going to be at this depth, and it, he's, uh, he's there, and it just not happening. And, and I said, oh, don't worry about it. You know, it's just a few more feet probably be all right. And at any rate, um, so I, the guy said, well, he said, I, could, I got one more length of rod that I could finish that today, and then I'll come back tomorrow. I said, yeah, well, you might as well go ahead and stick that down. And, see how that, and then come back tomorrow, and, and he, he continued filling a few more feet. The river was roaring away, I can remember that clearly, and he, and he, he went around like this, and he, he said, come over here. <laughs> he said, there's water coming out of the top of the, there's water coming out of the top of the pipe. It's coming out of the well. <laughs> it's, it's some water. Some water. In Vermont, the average well is, say, 250 to 270 feet deep, and the average flow is two to three gallons a minute. At 206 feet, we got 65 gallons a minute, at least, according to the driller. That intrigued me <laughs> a little, thinking, that's pretty good. The people down below us, two houses down, had gone down looking for water, had gone 800 feet and had less than half a gallon a minute. So uh, since they're below us and we're on top of a ridge, it's kind of odd that we would get that much water unless there was something to this dowsing stuff. Well, it's a heck of a well that produces a lot of water. So then your mother, had a, with this success behind her, but had a career launched. No, she didn't. She didn't need one to find out a little bit more well, about it. She wanted well, to find she was. Out. And then, then uh, that, was the, that was it. Well, I think the most sensational Fine, I'll call it that, that I made, was the uh, locating of a truck and two bodies in Lake George in 1981. Well, using a pendulum, I got a location of where they were. I determined that they'd gone into the lake. The following May, this is February, one body comes up within a half mile 
of where I designated that the truck was. So I said, well, maybe I ought to do it from a boat. Sure enough, the starts to go down, boom, throw off the anchor. They had the divers ready. They went down, came back up and said, uh, we've got it. The anchor had fallen in the back of the truck. 40 feet of water, a 32 mile lake. Believe me, I went into the bathroom and I looked in the mirror and I said, who me? Multiple choice tests on tests I have not studied for, I definitely use it. All right, is it A? No. B? No. C? Yes. Okay. C. That's, that's how I've passed a couple of my chemistry tests so far. Uh, but what is dowsing? Dowsing is well defined as applied intuition. It's a method of finding whatever you're seeking, whether it's water or hidden treasure or anything else your mind can think of. It's a pre-linguistic kind of sensing. You're just pushing your parameters, that's all it is. It's not extrasensory perceptions extended. Is it, is it like a cult in some ways? It is not a cult, it's a way of life, and it goes back to thousands of years. Perhaps the first evidence we have in Western culture is Moses going out and uh, hitting a rock with a stick and getting water, right? Dowsing is thousands of years old. We don't really know how old it is, but we do know for a fact in the Atlas Mountains of North Africa, there were caves, and in the caves there are, are drawings, and they've been carbon dated 8,000 years old. And this person standing there with a pair of L rods in their hands. Dowsing is one of the few pre scientific techniques that has survived into the modern scientific age, at least in you know, Western you know, European culture. Why thunder, Jeff, Rule, there's water all over this property. Everybody has kind of seen that image. It's when uh, somebody takes one of those sticks, it's like a Y, and they hold it and it guides them towards the water. I think I've seen it like on a movie or something. I've read about it. Do you believe that wherever the stick bent, that there's some source of water there? Uh, I mean, like in the Amazon or someplace, or some desert, you know, <laughs> digging for some water. Let's face it, most people think that's kind of crazy. It's bigger than just finding water. It's somehow t tuning into a consciousness that is knows a lot more than we even could ever imagine. Wait, so they think it's like a psychic ability? Dowsing is certainly a kind of psychic functioning. It's a clairvoyant perception. It's a link between the clairvoyant perception and your physiological processes. Who? It's just basically getting in touch with your intuition and your higher self. My own theory is that I don't have a lot to do with it. All I got to do is come up with a good question. All I do is ask the question. I don't figure out where it's coming from, the answers. I know the answers are going to be there. But I just ask the question, then go for it. I think I just ask. And I don't know who I'm asking or what I'm asking. I'm asking the universe or uh, God, if there, whatever God is for you, um, a power of some sort. You know, just give me some assistance. Well, I just stop thinking about anything else and clear my mind so it's blank, and then let it just come. We just call it detachment. You're basically a radio. And your readout device, instead of being acoustic, is, is your, your, your dowsing rods. 
What you're really doing is making little unconscious muscular movements that are telling you things, and that's just kind of an avenue or a means for you to access something that's in here. Okay, I'm gonna walk forward, and what I'm thinking of, I'll say out loud. Usually I wouldn't say it out loud, but I'll say it out loud, and that way you can get what I'm trying to think in my head. Okay, I want the center of the vein of water right under my hands. I want the rods to open when the center of the vein of water is right under my hands. Center of the vein, center of the vein, center of the vein, center of the vein, right there. Okay, uh, is this vein less than 100 feet down? It says yes. Okay, uh, is this vein uh, less than 90 feet down? Yes. Is this vein less than 80 feet down? 81, 82, 83, 84? Okay. Is this vein uh, between 82 and 83? Between 83 and 84? Between 83 and 84 feet down. Everybody knows what it feels like to have a hunch. And uh, this is saying, I want a hunch. Okay, and I want it now, and I want the hunch to come through me through this or that instrument, whatever I'm using. I use the L rods almost all the time. Uh, Roly, he used a Y rod, a plastic Y rod, but I use these, and I shorten them up. They're so much faster. I like the L rods and the pendulum and the overmeter. This is a dowsing rod made from uh, one of eight such sizes. Uh, of a TV antenna. This works the same as like an L rod. You could wear it around your neck as a necklace. <laughs> <laughs> Try all of the instruments and you'll find the ones that are yours, the ones that work the best for you and the ones you have most confidence in. Just hold it like this. And point in the direction that the water's going. Really nothing to it. All you need is a green stick. If there's a certain rod that you like and it fits your style or whatever, use it. But it isn't necessary. You can use anything. I have been working like with the fish rod there. You hold it like that, and, and as you ask it question, yes or no, it'll be going this for yes, and this for no. When people know I'm here, they'll call me because they think I can do something to help them out, and sometimes I get maybe two or three a day. <laughs> Bye. There will be people asking for all kinds of different things. Yeah. We're heading toward Bridgewater. We're heading to a piece of land that has been subdivided. One of these lots was bought by Judy Gates and her husband. They need to drill a well in order to have a, a sustainable piece of land. We're looking for a place that is going to provide year-round potable water for a domestic site. We found about 25,000 diviners doing it in this country, and almost all of them are in, come from little rural communities. In other words, uh, by definition, we've divided the country into urban and rural counties. We're able to do this using the geodetic survey and the uh, census to help us out. Most of the dowsers that we studied in our original edition were rural diviners, and they were the ones who were very pragmatic. This was a tool. And they saw it. They didn't want to have to attach it to anything psychic to them. There was nothing magic about it. Now, this was just a practical tool that worked, as far as they were concerned. However, almost all the members of the Society of American Dowsers live in big cities. They come from cities of 50,000 or more. They have no need to find water with their stick. None of them do it for water. They're all from New Age type people. People are coming out of the woodwork from everywhere to learn about it because they've discovered it's an extremely valuable tool. There's four conferences. Uh, there's this one here, and then there's the Fayetteville, and then there's the West Coast, and then there's the main one, which will have over a thousand people. And of course, there's 70, somewhat, probably close to 80 chapters around the country that are meeting on a regular basis.
Good morning, anybody. 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 Good morning. I'm glad to see you. I hope you'll be glad you've been here. Dowsing is in the midst of a wondrous renaissance. If you look at the numbers of people who join the American Society of Dowsers, it's huge, it's growing. Good morning. Oh, better than that. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. For most of you, this is going to be the beginning of a new way of life. Life will, if, if you get into dowsing as we teach you and follow it through with your own dowsing at home and learning, practicing, studying, your life is never going to be the same again. <laughs> it's so unscientific, this whole thing. There's no book on it. There's no manual of how to do it. It's just that it can be done, and I hope you will try it. Well, as I told you, I'm interested in what helps me. And I take pendulum if I'm going to go to grocery shopping, especially milks and vegetables and anything. If I'm going to buy a pair of shoes or anything, I don't care what it, even my car, I does it. That's correct. When you go home, why don't you, uh, for the men, check with your pendulum about your lawnmower if something isn't working and ask the question. And if you can't succeed, and for all you um, wives, if your husband is not a dowser, take out your rods and, ask, and have him ask the question, and you just hold your rods up, and you will get the answer what's wrong with the lawnmower. This is what I do, because he is asking me permission to do this. This is what you all can do with your lawnmowers. A lot of the people at the convention are doing um, new age kind of dowsing. You know, they're dowsing for help and uh, for auras, um, looking for mates. <laughs> <laughs> These urban dowsers are a whole new breed of animal. They're, they're, they're quite different from the, um, the, the farmers who probably don't think much of them, actually. Uh, I would say that your younger generation is going out, uh, quite far out on some things. Total joy. Think about it. Feel it. Be it. Total joy. You can have it now. <laughs> Some of us old timers got a lot of different ideas than the younger folk. And I think that a lot of people in the quote new age, like me, um, have easily forget that there's anybody um, that knows anything about um, connection with, with spirit and nature um, that's older. And uh, a lot of us think that we just, we're, we're just this young generation, we're all on our own here. And that is an illusion, it, that really shatters that illusion, um, being here at a dowsing convention. In the Cabanion it says, only the masters know the secret of not being controlled by the laws of mind. Well, now, there is something else, isn't there? There is something beyond the mind. It is beyond the mind. And I claim that something can be aware of the mind. It can look at the mind and laugh like hell. It can look at the mind and I call it the soul. When you become a dowser, it opens your heart and it opens your mind and you know that this is a viable thing and the earth is a living thing that we have to take care of. Now, you thought you came here to learn water dowsing. You just heard a lot of things that didn't talk very much about water. We are here to learn water dowsing because water dowsing is the basis, the grounding for all the other things that we're doing. And as you heard, we're doing an awful lot of other things. Uh, my name is Lee Kachadurian. I'm going to start with introducing you to two tools. Then we're going to send you out in the field to try it. Wow. 
Well, I thought we would maybe just ought to have one of these. You know, the same secret power that moves the dowsing rod moves the Ouija board and was responsible for the table tilting phenomenon of the spiritualist era and is responsible for the psychic pendulum. Only takes five minutes practice every day for 10 years. I came along as a, with a background as a professional stage magician that I was a detective for a world famous detective agency. I'm not allowed to use their name for publicity. I can't use the, the P word, but a famous detective agency. I used my background as a magician and as an investigator to investigate magical things. My title is Senior Research Fellow. When something seems too good to be true, I suspect that it is too good to be true, and I check it out. The sad answer to approximately 100% of these phenomena is no. Generally speaking, I'd like to have a well that will not be less than five gallons a minute. Good tasting, between six and eight pH. What we're seeing is just chance. It's, it's like, a, like being in the casino and having a short run of good luck and thinking, well, gee, I'll just wipe out the casino here and the next thing we know you've mortgaged the house the farm and the children's future and uh, there's nothing left so there is there is no evidence not one person who under meaningfully controlled conditions can do any of these things people go off on the deep end in all kinds of areas thousands one of them and when I see people, what I consider to be consider going off on the deep end, I get concerned. And if it happens to be my wife, I even get more concerned. And some of the activities that she gets herself involved in, I don't believe in. I don't think that's true. So, okay, we go past the garage, and we go up the Gold Coast Road, which is, is this it? I think this is the place. It's just not the kind of data that the general scientific public wants to accept. And there are a number of reasons for their non-acceptance, some of which are personal belief systems. It's considered by the general population of scientists to be sort of crazy stuff. And so anybody who would spend any time doing that must also be sort of crazy. And that may be true. <laughs> Hello there. We're a little later than you thought. <laughs> Sorry about that. If I'm going to do something for somebody, I try to be working from a complete uh, background of knowledge, and what if I t give them advice, it's because I think the advice is absolutely correct and it's, and it's provable and, and reliable. Yeah, and I, and uh, I've spent years doing the things that I advise people on, and, uh, I, don't, and I, I practice what I preach. I don't go Resistance around appears around they, uh, when other people aren't ready to listen to that page of the novel. including sometimes husbands. <laughs> I go so far with what I can handle relative to this uh, activity, and I go so far with what I believe in, and I'm going to stop there. Following the forward swing of the pendulum, it led me, and still does, up to this general area here. Running around town doing stuff like that, you're going to, be, you're going to become known as a quack. That's what's going to happen. So I'll just plop, dump that there, and put this on. Okay, we're looking for the very, very, very best site for Judy and her hubby. Please show me where I need to go in order to get to it, so we'll go there. Pretty good. All right, we're getting there. If she wants to take this on, what appears to be as a profession at this point, then be professional about it. I don't even want to see the bills. I don't want to see that you're spending fifty dollars a month talking to Arkansas or Timbuktu or wherever else. I don't want to know about it. And among other things, that's why I built the out there. We're, we're, in a, we're, in a, we're in a litigious society. You can't go running around the countryside, uh, dropping advice here and there, and telling people whatever comes into your head. You can't do that. Four gallons, five gallons a minute, six gallons a minute. It's about six gallons a minute. I don't want to be annoyed 
every evening with some phone call that seems to me rather bizarre. Down you go. What I'm getting is that he will need to go down 301 feet. He should be getting around six, six and three quarters gallons a minute. Great. Okay. Is this nonsense? When I bought this, this was an open field here. And um, I decided I was going to put a business here. The little house here with the little greenhouse in front of it, that was a prototypical house. That was the first home with a ventilated concrete slab for which there were patents made. We had an advanced wall system. We had a, a lot of the ideas about alternate heating. And in addition to all that, the factory, which is behind us, which still has the Green Mountain Home logo on it, that's a solar heated building. And the energy bill for the entire complex was something like 1,100 gallons of fuel a year, which was pretty, most houses burn more than that. We did the complete plans for the house from the ground up. We supplied the house in kit form. It was high quality. And we did a good job. Uh, we had a reputation of being straight shooters. We did what we were supposed to do, when we were supposed to do it, for the price we said we'd do it. That's pretty rare. And you got to talk to the owner of the company. Everyone talked to Jim. Think what you do every day in your life. You try to get an advantage on the world. You try to find out where to go to get the best price on gasoline. Um, Where's the best place to, to buy property if I want to buy property for investment or to live in? Uh, you investigate it. You look into the, the World Wide Web, onto the Internet. You look in the newspapers. You read books. That's what science is all about, too. Get an advantage. Learn to live with your environment and, uh, and to conquer it. If you don't keep trying to beat it, you fall by the wayside. Uh, that's what's called being weak and wimpy, and people walk right over you. You've got to be out front there. All set? Thanks. I was I was getting a lot of dowsing calls. Dad was getting a little irate, to put it mildly, about having the phone line, the phone line, which was not the business phone line, tied up with dowsing calls. And he didn't want to hear about it because it made him annoyed. So he said, you get your own phone line. So I got my own phone line. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I'll leave here at 8. How's that? What I'm talking about oh, good. is the Would reliance like that? of dowsing mm -hmm. in, in, in place of, first of all, knowledge. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm the smartest guy in the world, but I paid my dues. I've worked in construction a long time. I've studied structures, I've studied soils, I've studied drainage, and all that stuff is technical knowledge, mm -hmm. okay? Now, what I suggested that you do is pay your dues, take courses, uh, serve your apprenticeship. Like, take courses in what? Whatever it is that you're pursuing. Dowsing? Well, I'm not saying the dowsing, but in this A lot of people reject dowsing as superstition. A lot of businesses and, you know, mineral companies and everything employ dowsers routinely because it works, you know. Um, and I think at, at one level there is no doubt that dowsing works because the marketplace uh, has made that judgment and then they use dowsers.